Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 42 of Super Sports, the review series for Gran Turismo selection of exotic performance cars which nestle between sports car and full-on supercar. And in this particular pick, we're featuring a vehicle which has kind of grown on me over the years, a vehicle which, when it first came out, I didn't really particularly care about that much. And the car is, as you can see, of course, the Ferrari California. It's essentially Ferrari's main cruising GT car. It has the four-seat layout, the electronic folding roof, the softer, more elegant lines rather than being more sharp and aggressive like something like a 488 or a 599. But the real question is, can this car, being as it is more of a Monaco cruiser than a Nuremberg Ring missile, take on the other cars of the series, not just Ferraris, but beyond that, to more of its main rivals, such as things like Aston Martins and Jaguars, more in that kind of long-distance luxury GT rather than pure track machine. Well, for a start, there's the engine. It's powered by a 4.3-litre naturally aspirated V8. It's rear-wheel drive, and it puts out some decent power. 714 horsepower and 493 foot-pounds of torque. Now, it is heavier than some, but it's still not overly heavy considering how well equipped it is. With the full weight loss package, it weighs in at just over 1,300 kilos, so that's not too bad. There are some race cars which weigh around that kind of area. As far as horsepower per ton, it's not the strongest of this class, mainly because it doesn't have as much power as some others, and it is also heavier. It puts out just under 550 horsepower per ton, and the PP is also quite reasonable. 607, so nowhere near as high as some of the other cars here. But that's potentially a good thing. What about performance? Well, in a straight line, Ferraris aren't typically all that great on Gran Turismo. Their acceleration is okay, good even, but not necessarily among the best. And for top speed, they're certainly not among the best, generally speaking. There are some, like the FXX and the Enzo, but most of them, the F430, the 458, and this car kind of falls short of the mark compared to what you might expect of them. This car can do around 250 under its own power, which certainly isn't bad. They're not slow cars by any means, but not as quick as, say, a Jag XKR or an XKRS or various other cars in this category. So, what's the handling like? Can that make up for the slight lack of straight line performance? Well, the handling, I'm glad to say, on this car is very good. The handling is actually, I would say, outstanding for a car which isn't really designed to be a hardcore track machine. It handles corners very well, it handles its weight very well, and it doesn't feel as heavy as it is. If you were to guess how heavy this car was fully tuned, you'd probably say something closer to 1,200 kilos rather than 1300, and to feel 100 kilos lighter than it actually is, certainly isn't a bad thing. Now as far as price, it is pretty expensive, many of the Ferraris are. 236 grand is quite a lot for a super sports car, but at the same time, far from being the most in the class. As to whether or not I would recommend this car, I would say that I would recommend this car primarily to people who are not necessarily just Ferrari fans, but primarily people who are just looking for something a bit different. Because this car makes an interesting change from the more obvious choices within its class, almost a subclass of super sports cars, which is luxury GTs, more of a change than, say, an Aston Martin or a Jaguar or a Maserati Gran Turismo, those more obvious choices, or a Mercedes SL even. This car offers some very interesting differences to those cars, because being a Ferrari, even though it's a V8, it's a much more high revving, rev happy even, V8 than many of the others, which tend to go for low end torque and big lazy power, such as you'd expect from a Jag or a Mercedes. Having a luxury GT, which is also kind of a screamer, is an interesting juxtaposition, and it actually works really well for a Ferrari. Not surprisingly, given that this is the same company that can make a screaming wagon in the way of the FF. If they can make that work, 
then certainly it could work for a long distance GT. Overall, is it a little bit too expensive? Well, no, I would actually say it's not. It's actually very well priced against what you'd expect from Mercedes and Aston Martin in particular, to some extent Jaguar, but not so much. If you're looking for something different, especially within Ferrari, it definitely offers that. And actually, the only downside I would say to this car is actually the fact that when you drive it, the roof is up all the time. And that seems kind of a shame. It kind of eliminates the point of having a convertible on the game when you're not allowed to use it as such. But apart from that, I definitely recommend checking this car out. It's not the quickest or necessarily the best at anything in particular, but it's good enough at a lot of things to the point where it turns out to be a surprisingly competitive machine. But that's it overall for this particular episode. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.